In Lent week one, we explored the Lenten practice of saying no. It is easier to say no to something when you've already said yes to something else. As those who follow Jesus, each of us constantly gets to choose no or yes. Will I do this or will I do that? How will I use the time and resources I've been given? That's a stewardship question. Then last week, we looked into being a blessing. We have been blessed in order to be a blessing to others. We look deeper into the stewardship question. As people of faith, it's up to each of us to decide how are we going to use everything God has given us. Stewardship is really about caring for, managing, and using something that is not yours, but for which, which you have been given for a time. It's yours to look after and use on behalf of its rightful owner. A good steward always manages what they've been given as a response to the one who owns it and who has given it to them. And that includes our time as well as our physical resources. Now, maybe we should have started this, with this Lenten practice two weeks ago. But today we're going to talk about worship. Worshiping regularly and often. One day two people from the same congregation were having coffee and talking about church stuff. You know, the regular chitter chatter. Finally, one says to the other, you know, I've gone to worship for 30 years now. And in that time, I've probably heard something like 3,000 sermons, but the, for the life of me, I can't remember a single one of them. So I think I'm just wasting my time, and the ministers are wasting their time by giving sermons at all. Well, the other person thought for a moment and then replied, you know, I've been married for 30 years. In that time, my wife has cooked some 32,000 meals. But for the life of me, I cannot recall the entire menu of one, not even a single one of those meals. But I do know this, they all nourished me and gave me the strength I needed to do my work. If my wife had not given me these meals, I'd be physically dead today. Likewise, if I had not gone to worship for nourishment, I'd be spiritually dead today. According to N. Graham Standish, a Presbyterian minister in the United States, worship must provide a tangible sense that Christ is in their midst, an encounter and experience of God. Worship is not just a show we attend on those Sunday mornings when we have time. Worship is not a spectator sport. Worship is not something that can only occur in this building and this space. Worship does not even require the traditional trappings of minister, organist, and choir, hymn book, and bulletin. In worship, as we sing songs, listen to messages, read through scripture, and pray together, we can experience that precious love of God that is for each of us. And in that love, discover a sense of belonging and perhaps even purpose for our own lives. Worship takes us into the heart of God. Worship, like stewardship, is about our response to God, who God is and what God does. As part of our worship today, we read Psalm 95. It starts with our response. Let us shout with joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyously shout to God with songs, songs of praise. Sounds like worship to me, which is our response to for you are a great God, high sovereign above all gods. In your hand are the depths of the earth. To you belong the mountains. The sea is yours, for you made it. Your hands also formed the dry land. 
Who is God? God is great. God is the creator. God made it all and owns it all. And God is good. God provides everything for us. All that we have has come from God. So we thank by God by using some of the time that God has given us to come together with other followers of Jesus for worship, regularly and often. When we worship, we enter into God's presence. We start by settling ourselves and centering ourselves. Often, that involves silence, prayer, and music. We listen for what God is saying to us, reading scripture, hearing a sermon or message, watching a video, talking with someone, or practicing quiet meditation. Any of these can become vehicles through which we listen for what God is saying to us. We respond as a result of our experience of God's presence and listening for God's, God's message to us. Now, what do we have to do? A time of dedication or commitment, praying both for ourselves and for others. Each of us responds differently depending on what we heard or felt from God. And we need to do this thing we call worship regularly and often, as the churchgoer said about being spiritually nourished. So here's what we're going to do, how we're going to work this week for our Lenten practice. Worship regularly and often. Think about stories that inspire you, about the ways that your church is living out its mission and making a difference in people's lives. This community of faith asks you to respond by giving generously and consistently to your church, both here in your local congregation and beyond through mission and service. We cannot work as your church unless this happens. This week, I want you to use some of your time every day to worship. Now, we won't be holding daily worship here in the church building, but yes, you can do this together with others or on your own. Worship at home with your family. Worship in an arena with friends. Worship wherever it's convenient. Just worship, regularly and often. Use the outline for worship we've talked about. Enter into God's presence. Here I am. Listen and respond. Offer some of your time every day to worship God. This is a great Lenten practice to do together as a family or with a good church friend or two. If that is not possible, you can worship wherever you are whatever you see in front of you, whatever your heart says. To start, offer a prayer and a bit of silence to enter into God's presence and into worship. Maybe sing or listen to a worship song because there are lots of them online. Then read the scripture from today's worship or remember a particular scripture message that seems important today. Listen to what God, through the Holy Spirit, is saying to you through them. Consider, then, what will be your response. If you are worshipping as a family or a group, talk about it. What did you hear God saying? How will you respond to the invitation to generous stewardship? Offer a prayer for your family and friends and pray for your church. Sometimes it is easier to make it a habit by choosing a particular time of day or a particular place. The important thing is to use some of your time every day to worship. Then come back next week ready to share a brief story of how this Lenten practice worked for you and how it helped open you up to God, or maybe it didn't, as you made space in your life to actively live out the way of Jesus. Amen.